Hey guys and welcome to H3D CGI. In this tutorial we're going to go through hard surface subdivision modeling techniques. So we're going to go through some of the very simple and basic techniques and tools that we use first and we're also going to go through what is subdivision modeling or some examples of that. So as you can see I got two objects in my scene, a simple cube and a simple cylinder with a little extrusion. So let's go ahead and have a look at what the preview of the high poly versions of these would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer on. So as you can see, these two objects are the high poly versions that I already created. So let's go ahead and have a look at some of the main differences. So as you can see, the one on the left has a really hard edge and the light doesn't really hit it. So it looks really flat. Whereas the one on the right, as you can see, has a really nice bevel to it. And when light hits it, it gives off this really nice highlight and makes our cube look a lot nicer. Uh, you can notice the same thing happening here with our cylinder so you can see the low poly version looks really flat and we don't get that nice highlight around the edges whereas the one with the high poly version you get a nice highlight now notice that I said that these are just the preview of the high poly versions and let's go ahead and have a look at what do I mean by that inside Maya when you press number three on your keyboard Let's go ahead and try that out on this cube. When you press 3 on your keyboard, as you can see, it will go ahead and smooth your object. And this is just a preview of what your object would look like when you go ahead and smooth this. So notice that that doesn't happen to this cube, even though this is smoothed. Okay, so this would be my unsmoothed version. And as you can see, I've got these supporting edges around there, and that will stop it from uh, turning into a sphere and we'll come back to that in just a second. Now notice that I do say that it's a preview. The reason for that is because this is just a preview of what our object would actually look like when we smoothed it. Now when we actually apply the smooth to it, our object would look like this. And as you can see at first glance, it looks exactly the same as our preview version and as the whole point. But when, you, when we go ahead and have a look at our wireframe, as you can see, this one has a lot more faces because this is not a preview. This is actually the smoothed object. So previewing your smooth version of the object is really good because it will be a lot lighter. So your scene won't be as heavy and it will give you fast access to have a look at what the object would look like. So let's go ahead and have a look at the poly count on these. So I'm just gonna go up to heads of display and then click on poly count. As you can see, our unsmoothed version, for example, on this cylinder, has 140 faces. And our preview version, we did add some extra edges in here to go ahead and support the shape, and we'll come back to that in just a second, has 420 faces. And our actual smoothed mesh has over 6,000. So using the smooth mesh preview is really important instead of actually smoothing your object because it will lighten up your scene a lot. So let's go ahead and get rid of these objects and go through some of the tools and techniques that we use in hard surface modeling to go ahead and have our um, object keep its shape. So as you noticed earlier on, we created this cube and when I go ahead and press smooth mesh preview, it will go ahead and smooth my object and it will turn into a sphere. Now we can still see some jaggedy bits and that's because the smooth mesh preview default subdivision level is two, but we can go ahead and actually increase that by going to subdivision level three or subdivision level four by pressing the page up and page down keys. So let's go ahead and while well, smooth mesh preview mode is still toggled on, let's go ahead and press page down to go ahead and decrease the subdivision preview level to one and this would be zero, okay? And this is one, two. So as you can see, the default is subdivision level two, and this is three and four, as you can see, as I increase the subdivision level, we get more of a sphere. So let's go ahead and set this back to subdivision level two. And just to confirm that this is what would happen if we actually smoothed our object, let's go ahead and go through two different ways of actually applying this smooth. So the first one, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this cube, smooth that one, and then with this one, while this is still smooth, we're going to go up to Modify, Convert, and go to Smooth Mesh Preview to Polygons. 
Now as you can see what this will do is it will actually apply the preview to our actual object. So now you can see this has 96 faces whereas the preview still only has 6 faces. Now let's go ahead and go for a different way of applying a smooth to our object. So I went, I undo all the uh, modifications that I've done and then we're going to go to mesh and then go to smooth and check the little box on the right hand side to go ahead and bring up our options. Now here you can see you can go ahead and set a different division level so we can increase this all the way up to 4 or even 1. And let's go ahead and use 2 which is the default um, division level and make sure we have hard edges checked off and that will go ahead and smooth our object. So let's go ahead and apply this and see what happens. Okay. So as you can see the exact same thing happened that we've done earlier. So this is just a different way of applying the smooth. And we can also go ahead and increase this to 3 which would go ahead and make our object look something like this. So if I press page up on the preview this is what it would look like. So let's go ahead and duplicate this object. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and set 3 on this one and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see we've got a lot more faces which will make our scene a lot heavier and our object is a lot smoother. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of these objects and let's go ahead and have a look at what we need to do to go ahead and keep this shape. So let's see if we have a hard surface object here which is let's say for example a table and I wanted to keep these nice hard edges and I only wanted to get a nice highlight across these edges. So let's go ahead and look at one way of doing that. We can go ahead and add in supporting edges for each edge that our object has. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our insert edge loop tool, open up the option box and make sure that we reset this so we only add one at a time. Actually, because this is a cube, we can go ahead and add multiple edge loops. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and click multiple edge loops and make sure that we have two selected. And then let's go ahead and click on this edge and go ahead and scale this out all the way to the supporting edge. So you want to go ahead and move these edges fairly close to the outer edge like so. Okay. And each outer edge needs to have two supporting edges. So let's go ahead and insert the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and use the insert edge loop on these edges as well and I'm going to go ahead and scale these out just to move them to the right place. And let's go ahead and do that one more time. So I'm just going to press G on my keyboard to go ahead and bring up that tool again and scale this one out. Ooh, and I'm afraid we already added those so let's just undo that one. And we need to add them in here. So I'm going to go ahead and move them there. Okay, and I think we have all the supporting edges that we need now. So if you have a look, this is one of our outer edge. Okay, so I'm just highlighting it for you guys so it's easier for you to see. And as you can see, we've got a supporting edge on the bottom and we've got a supporting edge on the top half. Now what this will do is when we go ahead and smooth this, Maya will know that we only want to smooth in between these two edges. So we can go ahead and smooth this now. Okay, so now you see that when we go ahead and smooth this, our object will hold this shape and we get a nice highlight going across the edges. Now let's have a look at what happens to our supporting edges when we go ahead and smooth this. So I'm just going to highlight that and then smooth this. And as you can see, our supporting edge slides all the way up here. And I want to go ahead and keep this supporting edge closer to our outer edge so we get a harder highlight. So let's go ahead and add in some extra supporting edges which I normally call our secondary supporting edges. Okay, And this might not be that important for this cube but if we go ahead and scale this, so let's go ahead and scale it this way so it's not as uniform. Okay, And let's just go ahead and move this edge a bit further up. Okay, And same with this one. So move that there Ooh, and make sure that I select the whole loop. Okay. And now if you go ahead and smooth this, you'll notice what will happen. Okay. So now when we go ahead and smooth this, as you can see, our supporting edge slides all the way up here. And we want to go ahead and keep this supporting edge 
fairly close. So we get the best moving result. So let's go ahead and add in the extra supporting edges that we need. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure that I reset my tool. So I only add in one at a time this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a supporting edge for this and this and one on the bottom as well. I'm gonna go ahead and add one on the other side. Let me just close this so you guys can see better what I'm doing. Add one on the bottom. Let's go ahead and add one on the other side as well. Okay. So now you'll notice when we go ahead and smooth this object, we get a lot nicer bevel. And when we go ahead and smooth this, if I go ahead and highlight our two supporting edges, you'll see what happens. So our second area support edge do slide further up, okay? But our first supporting edge will go ahead and stay really nice and close to our outer edge. And that will give us a lot nicer smooth in between these two edges. And that will give us a really nice highlight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short introduction to hard surface modeling. And thanks for watching Edge 3D CGI.